Yeah, I'm I'm not going to belabor, uh, you know, because I know everybody's got stuff going on. I know Jabari's writing his uh, doctoral dissertation right now. Oh, and, wow. And, How many pages yeah, is he, that? Uh, he, he can tell you that better than me. <laughs> yeah, a whole lot. We, we hope we don't write too many pages, right? <laughs> yeah, I know last time I looked, you was well in the hundreds. So, oh. good, good God Almighty. Yeah, so it, it can get um, it can get rough doing that type of stuff. Yeah, so uh, I ain't gonna hold people up. I know time is money on on a Saturday, and I know it's a few more folks that's gonna dial in. Uh, so basically, you know, this is part two of the series. Everything I was not taught, and, and you know, I took into account that you know the the main guests of honor, those graduates, uh, two of them are working today. So I'm Correct. recording from the beginning, and. I'm taking the motivation from the premise, you know, as a kid, I used to eavesdrop a lot, you know, on, ah. on older folks talking. You know, I would listen to them talk, and then I would learn good things and bad things. So I'm hoping that, that this will turn into a conversation, you know, that they can go back and listen to since both of them are at work and any other kids that might discover it. So that that would be the motivation for this is just to have uh, – Folks who've uh, accomplished some things, who've seasoned in life, who are going through things right now, whether it be a doctoral, whether it be licensing, whether it be packing up and moving, change, going to a new location, opening a new chapter in life, just to share some light on some of those things because both uh, our main guests of honor that, that we're talking about today are starting college. You know, they're starting in the fall. So it's going to be a big change for them whether they know it or not. So I just want to throw some topics out there, and then we'll start talking about them. But since we're recording, you know, and people might discover this, I just want to go ahead and go through the, the basic stuff that we always do. You know, it's millionmentorsmarch.org is, is, you know, the name of our group. And it was founded by myself, co-founded by Amir Wesson. And then our mission is basically just to create lasting solutions to that systemic devaluation of black people, reduce crime, you know, and do it through mentorship. And we're not holding a march or anything like that, you know, but we're figuratively suggesting that we march into the lives of young folks, you know, to help normalize goodness within our community. And, you know, that's just the, the, the public service announcement that I like to always put out there for people who might discover these videos. And the last webinar we had uh, Mr. Uh, Bobby talk about funding uh, college, and uh, he uh, has links on our website, and I'll make sure that those get updated, and there's also a video recording that will get posted to the website when this one gets posted as well. But the main thing I want to do right now before we get into some, some discussions is to recognize uh, the graduates from 2019. So we, we have a, a lot of folks doing a lot of great things right now. So I, I'll point out, again, Ms. Bria Bass, you know, just graduate with our high school diploma, and she's going to Georgia Southern, am I correct? Yes. Yeah, so she'll be going to Georgia Southern University, and then Amaya just graduated with her diploma as well. She'll be going to Penn State University, and then also my wife, Tisha, finished her Bachelor of Science um, at, at Purdue Global, and she's going to be starting a, a master's uh, in the fall. And uh, Miss Jackson, Charlotte Jackson, she finished her Bachelor of Science in Psychology as well. Uh, Jabari's uh, better half, you know, and, and I say that, uh, <laughs> I say that, uh, you know, he, he, I ain't going to mess with Jack. That's his better half, you know. So uh, she, she's going to be moving on to do bigger and better things as well, but congratulations to them. And also, Miss Scott, again, congratulations on your licensure. And I know you said you have some more to do with that, um, but we're, we're behind you 100% of the way, and, you know, we take our hat off to you, you all of you ladies and gentlemen who are out there doing great things with yourself. And also I talked about those small scholarships. You know, this is something we want to build upon in, in years to come. So those two graduates from high school, you know, we raised a, a few funds out here at Fort Leonard Wood. And, you know, it, it's not much, but, you know, it's better than nothing. And then I'll talk some more about small scholarships combining to make big scholarships here in a second. But we're going to offer a 125 dollar scholarship to Ms. Priya Bass and also to uh, Amaya to help them get started with little things they might need as they go into the dorm life and, and other little things that might come up for them. So just send me uh, some information afterwards, and then what, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and forward those funds to those young ladies. And, and you know, it's, it's, it's not much, but it's the least that we could do. And in the future, just pay it forward and, and do this kind of thing for your community members um, when you uh, – 
get into a position to do so. And other thing I'll point out to you guys, you know, I, and I think I sent some links on the website. Uh, here's another gentleman. It's a black-owned business, you know, you know, and black-owned doesn't mean cheaper or uh, doesn't mean that you, you're going to get something for free. But this guy uh, by the name of Christopher Gray, you might have saw him on Shark Tank on uh, ABC a little while back, but he's the CEO of the Scholarly app, and this application has hundreds of millions of dollars of scholarships that can be resourced and found by, uh, by students out there, whether they're going to college or whether they're already in college. It's really user-friendly. Um, I got on it myself um, just to test it out because I like to try things before I advocate them to people. Um, but it's, it's, a great, it's a great, great, great application. And, I mean, it gets details so that you can customize your profile to find the scholarships that fit what it is that you're looking for. You know, and a little bit more about this, this app. Like I said, they've helped students win over $100 million in scholarships so far. And that doesn't mean one scholarship for $100 million. That means putting together hundreds or thousands of different scholarships to cover your full tuition if you'll do the work to get it. So how this app works, you know, uh, basically what you do is you personalize your, your scholarship search based on whatever your background is. You know, if you're military, and I mean, it gets so much in detail that it'll ask, do your parents bank with USAA or do your parents bank with Bank of America? And there's scholarships for little things like that. Has anyone in your family ever had a heart, heart attack? Has anyone in your family ever served in the military? They'll ask you questions like that, hundreds of questions, and then they'll point you to the scholarships that best suit your situation. So there's tons of money out there. And I just want to put this out there and make sure that uh, the people watching this go and download this application. And, again, black-owned does not mean free. You know, there's a, a free trial version, but it's like a, I think it's like a $4 a month or a $29 a year fee that you'll end up paying. But I think this is something worth getting behind. And this guy, he's, he's used it himself to earn over $1.3 million in scholarship just for itself, and he completed a master's degree, and he has chosen to focus on, on, on his business right now rather than pursue a doctoral degree. So get behind this one. And with, with that said, you know, I'm just going to move on into some, some discussion, like I said, with the motivation. So I'm just going to open up the floor. Is there anything pressing uh, to, to any of you? I know for me, with my daughter going to college, um, I have a little bit of concerns about things like um, partying too much, drugs, alcohol, that kind of stuff. What about you guys? Denise here. So I yep. guess my concern would be um, maybe not so much the partying and the drugs, but the sexual assaults that tend to happen at schools that a lot of people don't understand. Um, Bree is going to school as a young 17-year-old considering she graduated a year early. So that would be my major concern. My other concern is um, safety. Earlier before we started recording, you mentioned safety was your key concern with um, Maya, going, Maya going to school, and that is our safety too. Thank God for organizations, um, fraternal organizations, and having people in certain locations, keeping people close. Um, Absolutely. So those would my major concerns with her going off to college. Financial yeah, I got those budgeting, things. Budgeting. Um, she is currently using some GI Bill. She will get a stipend. But having her to utilize her money in a wise manner. Yeah, absolutely. Anybody want to speak on that? I got my thoughts, but I don't want to dominate the conversation. Yeah, this is Jabari. Um, yeah, I I hear your concerns, especially for whether it's your daughter or your young man, um, your young lady or your young man that's going to school. The sexual assault is real. And if um, we as a community take it lightly, um, we are not telling ourselves the truth. 
if we think that it's something that is just a a problem that other people have, we are not telling ourselves the truth. Um, I would caution any parent that's sending their child to school to have several candid conversations about sexual assault. Also, about the role of the bystander in sexual assault or harassment situations. If you are in the vicinity, if you are near a situation where there is a form of harassment or assault connected with sexual behavior, you have a responsibility as a human uh, to say something. And you may very well be uh, the victim of <laughs> of doing the right things um, when those type of things happen. I hope that whatever campus that your child uh, is attending, that there is a significant amount of time de- dedicated during the orientation process to talk about sexual assault, uh, it is real. And uh, I'll pause on that because I'm very passionate about that. Yeah, yeah uh, I'm, you know, I'm glad you brought up, you brought up some real poignant um, ideas in that one, Jack, because, you know, uh, Ms. Scott, and, and I'm with you, I think about things from the perspective of I don't want anything to happen to my daughter you know, in terms of her being assaulted. But I think Jack just opened up another thought in me um, that I never thought about. I wouldn't want her to ruin her life because she's implicated in something, and it didn't necessarily happen to her, but she didn't report it, you know, because she was there, she saw it, and didn't say something. So that's another aspect, you know. And I I know you're doing a lot of studying right now, Jack, on the hazing and and other things that, that go on in military organizations and also with fraternal organizations, you know, because my daughter has already expressed that she wants to join sororities and other things, and she's already on the the basketball team. And, you know, certain things happen, you know, and and I I don't want to be a spoiler uh, for the movie if you haven't seen it yet, but me and Tish, we went and saw um, the the movie last night, Ma's Ma's Place, or something like that. But that's surrounded by sexual um, assault. That's like the underlying premise that happens in there, and it happens in all kinds of ways. So that's something to to really be concerned with. And the last thing I'll say uh, before I hand it back over to you all, you know, I say it all the time to folks out here, young people, and also my daughter before she goes to college, you know, if you're hunting, say, for instance, if you're going fishing, you go to the lake because that's where the fish are. If you're hunting deer, you go to the woods. Well, you know, people go to college for a lot of reasons. Some people go for education. Some people go to sell drugs. Some people go to prey on young girls. If I'm a predator, I'm going to go where the young girls who are just getting out on their own are, college. You know, that's a great place for a predator to go and do his or her thing. So that's something to to definitely think about uh, for these young ladies and young men going into college. Any other thoughts? Just to add to that, sexual assault and just that whole sexual behavior, we have to also remember sexting, pictures, all of that is included in all of that. So even like um, when Jabari was saying, um, being associated with it, even if that text comes into you, that's time to delete it, bring it to the attention of somebody, and make sure that that matter gets handled. Absolutely, and, and yeah, you know, the sex thing, that stuff can become a big deal, you know, and I don't think um, the government has figured that out yet because it can turn into slander and other things that happens with people, especially, you know, boyfriend gets mad, you send him something in private, and now it goes public. You know, there's lots of things like that that happens um, out in the, in the world and, and around high schools and around colleges that they should think about. And then another aspect that a lot of uh, young men and young women don't think about uh, when they go into a college environment, you know, is, is that, okay, you're, you're now not considered jailbait, so to speak. It's taboo for college professors, 
and instructors to date students, but it happens, you know. And those kind of inappropriate relationships tend to uh, be more prevalent in college settings where, where it's uh, an adult learning environment rather than like it used to be in high school. So, you know, I would say to these young ladies going into school, don't be surprised if a grown man, uh, uh, an instructor, a college professor propositions you. You know, be prepared. Don't let it surprise you when that sort of thing happens. And be prepared on how you're going to handle it, how you're going to not let yourself be isolated in certain situations. You know, always have a, a classmate with you. or uh, We call them battle buddies in the middle, military. When you, when, if someone tries to isolate you, be, be prepared to deal with those situations. You know, these come see me after class type of deals. Other thoughts? Yeah, you guys are... Uh, are are talking about it. I'm a I'm a repeat myself. Uh, parents need to have continuous dialogue about <laughs> these type of things. The worst thing that can happen in this Me Too generation that we live in is for 30 years later for us to be finding out about these type of things um, happen. Um, during this time period, um, if 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 you receive a text message, uh, that sexting thing, each campus should have a victim advocate for that student to to go to and share it. You are not snitching if you are protecting yourself. I'm going to tell you, there's a counter narrative in the culture that says you're snitching because you're not allowing a predator to take advantage of someone's son or somebody's daughter. I am telling you, we have got to get off the bench and get into the field and make a play. If you play football or basketball, you can't make a play on the sideline. But you can make a play when you're on the field. When these type of things happen, you got to let somebody know. The campus has a responsibility to respond uh, to these type of behaviors. Um, For some people's sons and daughters, this is going to be the first time in their life that they're going to be away from their parents. They're going to be, so for some, my son this year, who's going to K-State University, he's going to be two states away from me. So making sure that your son and your daughter have an action plan for these type of situations is essential in several conversations. Yeah, that that is absolutely right. You know, and and I would say if there's opportunities to get down and do open houses, um, I think that's a great investment of time and, and money. You know, everything costs money to go down and do that stuff. Because, I mean, little things that might fly by the young people's head, it's just um, it's essential to us as, as older folks. Because I know when we went down to Penn State, something that stood out to me was the fact that, um, you know, they had on-campus uh, medical, whereas there's, there's going to be no questions asked. You know, you get uh, every kind of screening you can think of from STD to pregnancy and just all kinds of things that you can go in. And it's it's, it's a, a perk that every student gets if they're accepted into that school, you know. So th- these are the kinds of things to ask, you know, so that wellness, you know, is something that's at the forefront of the kids' minds, you know, because there, there's, there's unwanted sexual things that happen. And, you know, as parent, parents, even me, I cringe when I say it, that's going to be things that the kid wants to do themselves. So even if they decide to be active in that way, you know, they should do it in a, a responsible manner and, and be tested and, and take care of themselves. That, that's another aspect of it to think about as well. Any thoughts on it? Absolutely. That's part of having that dialogue. Um, whether you agree with your child or not, you know, our responsibility as parents is to raise them to be critical thinkers not only to be critical thinkers, but people that value themselves, that value their body, that value their life. Because if they value themselves, they value their body, and they value their life, they're going to value other people. That makes them people that's worthy of having a committed relationship with somebody else. If we're not having that dialogue, 
with, with, with our children, it's never too late to start. Because I'll be honest with you, I, I used to just think, you, you know, well, the time will come. Well, the time came. Um, and, and, and I realized that early and often, having those conversations, this is not a judgmental thing. Um, inviting yourself into your child's life. The easiest way to invite yourself into your child's life is to make sure that their opinion is the most important opinion, that their opinion is more important than your opinion. If their opinion is more important than your opinion, I found that they all tell you exactly what you need to know so you can start shaping and really having that genuine dialogue, conversation uh, with your child. Because there are other people that are communicating what a healthy relationship is. That's not you. If you don't get involved in that conversation, somebody else is going to tell you how to approach sex. Somebody else is going to tell your child uh, how to be in a committed relationship with somebody else. And that's, some, and that's a position that you have to earn in your child's life. Just because you raise them and all of that stuff, that does not mean that they're going to automatically adapt what you say. They're going to adapt how they feel about you. They're going to adapt with what they have seen. And all of us haven't been perfect. This is not for uh, for a perfect parent. This is about creating that dialogue and that structured environment for your child, that support system, so that they can be healthy. The worst thing for them to do is to go down to that school, not graduate, come back sick, or come back with some type of disease that they got to live with for the rest of their life, or not come back at all. Yeah, you you, you hit it on the head because, you know, we, we're talking about, um, you know, uh, sexual encounters, whether it be wanted or unwanted, but at the bottom line, you know, that's one of those serious things that could prevent them from reaching their goal, you know, because at the end of the day, a lot of people start college and not very many of them finish. You know, that's just a, it's just a fact. You know, we can go look it up ourselves, but it's just a fact. And the, the main thing we want them to do is, is to make it to their goal. And we want them to make it to their goal, you know, and, and a, and, in a one in one piece, basically, you're dropping off a healthy kid to college. You want a healthy kid to walk across the stage four years later if it's a four year institute or two years if it's a two year institute. So that that is the ultimate goal, and I would say it's definitely worth having the conversation with the kids because there's so many other things other than doing the work, doing the the, the curriculum in college that can prevent you from graduating. You know, and there, there's so many other things. And, and then on top of that, you know, I ran into a, a pretty good uh, TED talk uh, a day or so ago uh, from a young psychologist, black woman, um, and she was talking about how we value, value ourselves, you know. And I think it's so so important for us to let them know before they even start that, you know, there's a certain level of value, you know, that, that they cannot fall below in, in our eyes as parents. That means if they go and they make mistakes, I'm still going to value you as a parent. You just cannot fall below the threshold and so that they don't have performance anxieties, so that they're not afraid of making a mistake and coming to you and saying, hey, I'm not doing so well in this class. I need a little bit of help. Or I went to a party and X, Y, and Z happened. I need a little bit of help. You know, they need to know that we value them no matter what because they're on their own for the first time and there's going to be some trial and error. Uh, thoughts on that? Totally agree. Um, we definitely had a moment of that when she first hit the car, brand new licensors. So it's a thing like that. I laughed at her, but it was because cars are replaceable. My child isn't. So at the end of the day, I needed to her to understand that accidents happen. We have insurance to cover things like that. But you need to come and tell me. We're going to figure it out. Yeah, yeah absolutely. 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 I um I, I I think um your child and your relationship is an investment. Um it, it's it's an investment. And how you respond to their setbacks is gonna help you with your access in the future. <laughs> if you solve all their problems for them when they get into an issue they're going to want you to solve that problem 
for them when they go off to, to college and they become adults. If you overreact every time they have an issue, they're going to shun you when they become adults. So it's striking that, that, that delicate balance because, yes, if they keep living, I am sure they're going to find themselves in a compromising situation. They're going to, they're going to find themselves uh, falling short. And that's when, as a parent, you know, you can encourage them. And just like you said, uh, Gus, you have to love your children. And loving your children is one thing. But them knowing, believing, and having faith in that love for them from you is another. And you have to, on a, again, just like those continuous conversations, on a continuous basis, reach out to them and show them that you love them. There's going to be times when they don't feel like they're worthy. There's going to be times when you don't feel like you're worthy either. But you have to reach out and commit to them because it's well worth it. Yeah, absolutely. And I I say the last thing because we're coming past uh, 30 minutes and I don't want to keep everybody too long. The last thing I want to talk about is uh, taking care of business. You know, what are your thoughts on you know, because this is something I'm struggling with as well. What are your thoughts on how involved should I be uh, in making sure that my daughter is taking care of business, meaning the, the financial aspect of college? Because she's, she's going on a, on a scholarship, but it's not a full scholarship. So there's going to be some things that she has to do at the Bursler office uh, to take care of the, the remaining balances, meaning doing things with fa- FAFSA. And so to speak, and she's going to have to keep track of that. But how involved should I be? Should I be hands off, or should I let her be an adult? And and I ask that because it's critical. Because believe it or not, if you wait too late to do certain things, it'll cause you to miss uh, a semester here and there. So your thoughts on that? Again, striking that balance. Um, I think um, initially um, you should be very hands on um, and. When I say hands-on, it's like um, having that, having some accountability moments with your child to where they present certain things and you guys discuss certain things. Because if you get them started, um, they'll be able to, to run with the process, just establishing that dialogue, make sure that they learn how to, you know, establish that account, that they grant you access so that you can look at the account. And, Every time you look at the account, it doesn't mean that you have to call them and say, well, I was looking at your account and you weren't doing X, Y, Z. What it'll do is just give you context about what's going on and what's happening. Um, so it, those are valid concerns, but, but I think it's going gonna, it's gonna to shift kind of like the fulcrum effect to where sometimes you're a bit more heavy-handed than other times. Then other times you're a bit more uh, uh, light-handed. It just depends on how your daughter develops during the process. Yes. Uh, yeah. He, did you hear that? I got a comment from uh, Ike Parham and said he 100% agree with you about not overreacting in the chat window. So yeah, that was a great piece of insight there. And you know that that is that's good. You know to know to, to you know not not be so involved in the long run, but start off to start off to get them get them in a rhythm of taking care of business. The things that will trip them up that will cause them to to fall behind in time or, or miss a semester or something like that. Uh, so those are the things that cause people more often than not not to complete college because you know a missed semester you know that's when when things happen I don't when things happen I don't have going to devil's workshop if you haven't heard that one before um, and another thing that I, I wanted to ask you guys about before we close it out is uh, credit so to speak because when you start getting into college for kids is for, for some of them who come straight out of high school, that's when they first begin to establish a, a, a credit profile, you know, with the, the, the three major companies, the TransUnion, Experian, and so on. So, And that, that really is affected by things like FAFSA if you don't stay on top of things. So any pointers or insight from you, you, uh, you guys that you, you would give or recommendations that you would give to a young person uh, initially establishing their credit? 
Okay, Denise again. Um, I was in the middle of a transaction when you asked the first question. Um, my take is to be somewhere in the middle between hands-on and hands-off. Um, I feel like gentle reminders to make sure that things are taken care of, but to let give them that autonomy to grow into the individuals they're going to be. Our children tend to learn our habits. I am a spender. I Money burns a hole in my pocket, and my child knows that. But my significant other is a saver, a penny pincher. So having us to both kind of guide her through will hopefully allow her to lead into that good credit lifestyle where she can build credit and stay on top of her financial needs, utilizing some of this um, graduation money all these high schoolers are so eloquently waiting for, um, to get themselves in a position to set themselves up for success. Yeah, that that is great insight. Um, you know, and I, I don't know about you guys. I you know, I go check the mailbox uh, more than anybody else at our house. I'm already seeing uh, credit card companies sending my daughter credit card offers because they know she's starting college. Is that happening with you guys also? Not with me just yet because she's still very young. She hasn't turned 18 yet. So based on her birth date, I think, plays a role in that. But I have seen that I have gotten more credit card offers because, of course, the school wants me to go into financial debt to help her pay for school. Exactly. You know, so that that's something definitely to talk about. Maybe we'll do it in a follow-up series. Um, here's another app that I, that I would ask you guys if, if you're interested in, in teaching the kids to monitor their credit early on is uh, Credit Sesame. It's spelled just like Sesame Street. Uh, Credit Sesame is a good application for Android and Apple, and basically it, it helps you to monitor where you're at credit-wise right now and also gives you pointers on how you can approve on improve on certain aspects of your credit profile. So I, I made Maya download it um, last week because she's already getting credit card offers and, and she's going to be using a little bit of financial aid to go to college. So I wanted to keep track of her credit early on because, um, you know, that that will make the difference in the long run. So but before I close it out, any other thoughts or comments? Um, you know, I'm not in any kind of rush, but I want to protect you all's time. Yeah, I, I do want to talk a bit about financial aid, like recognizing the difference between a grant and a loan as far as uh, financial aid is concerned. I mean, for those, because we've been talking from a perspective of, from our children's perspective, two-parent household, uh, working parents um, who probably won't receive as many um grants through FAFSA as, as other children may. But for those uh, parents that are coming from uh, lower income situations, the grant is better than the loan. So being able to uh, exercise those grants, going into uh, college and college, colleges that are affordable, um, when we talk about affordable, it, it's like what is the um, the balance when it comes down to how much, how many grants are you going to get while you're pursuing that undergraduate degree, and how much additional uh, expenses will the college pay for it, pay for uh, the child? It, it is okay for your child to attend the local community college where the grants will cover 100% tuition, it's okay to do that. As, as parents, um, we have to really work with our children about what's good and what's bad. Also, as parents, if, if you know that, that, that your house is not a permissive environment for your child to pursue their education, it, it, it would behoove both you and the, the, the family to allow that child to have a college experience away from your household. That's the other challenge. Um, the, the, the kids that, I'm, that I believe I'm most concerned about are those kids whose parents have never been to college. They see that check come, and they uh, dip into that, that pool 
and the child feels like they have to support their parents in, their, in order to go. I know uh, that challenges different people's uh, moral bank account and ethical bank account, but those are some conversations that really need to be uh, had amongst families. Um, those are the things that I was thinking about. Yeah, those, those are great thoughts. And, I mean, from personal experience, not me but a close family member, I, I have seen them um, receive those uh, college che- checks from FAFSA and stipends that were supposed to be for books and to cover courses, and they end up doing other things with them over and over again. And before you know it, they're, they're out of college, in debt, didn't get a degree. You know, so those are very important things to think about. Those funds, don't let them, like Ms. Scott, like she said, burn a hole in your pocket. Take care of business with those funds. You know, pay, pay it towards your education. And, and if you don't trust yourself, um, I'm quite sure there are arrangements that can be made so that uh, the, the FAFSA organization sends things directly to the school rather than yourself. You know, so those are things to talk about, you know, with the kids and being self-aware and how they manage uh, those types of situations. Any, any other thoughts or comments? Hey, Gus, and make sure you leave my contact information because I'm available to work with, you know, someone that might be up on this and that that, that, that has concerns about that just to be able to to, to share what what I know from from, from my education, exposure, and experience uh, coming, in, coming into this point because I've been able to work with people from de- several different perspectives, whether they were more mature getting a degree, coming straight out of high school, whether they are there are athletes on partial scholarships, athletes on full full uh, scholarships, uh, just regular old uh, kids that are just trying to make it. So uh, make sure you make my contact uh, available, and and because this is something that I'm that I'm passionate about. So just okay. make sure okay. my contact information is available. Yeah, definitely. So what I have up on the screen now with the recording is the MillionMentorsMarch.org website. And then when you get to this website, all you have to do is go up to the top and hit Our Mentors. And once you hit the Our Mentors tab, um, it will take you down. Let's see. uh, might be lagging here a little bit. Our Mentors. We might have a little bit of latency here. Let me hit a refresh. Okay, Our Mentors. Yeah, once you hit the Our Mentors tab, uh, you will be uh, given a list of people here, and the guy who was just speaking is uh, Mr. Jabari Jackson, and he's, uh, like I said, Christian minister of leadership and a guy who's very passionate about education. What you could do, I think I have a link here. If not, I'll, I will provide his information on the site, but you could look him up uh, and send him an inbox uh, on Facebook or wherever else he wants to. Yeah, Facebook okay for you, Jack? Yeah, no problem. No problem. Yeah, you you send him an inbox on Facebook, and I'll make sure I update the link today so you can reach out to him. And then you got other folks like Miss Scott on the line, uh, Mr. George Scott, Dante Hill, who's not with us uh, today, Martise and Mark Denton, and a few other folks, and myself and Amir. If you want to reach out to folks, uh, so that that is um, that is pretty much it for today. And, and I appreciate you all coming. And this concludes uh, the live portion of the webinar, and I'll leave the line open for any other thoughts.